so in continuation to the lecture of climate change vulnerability adaptation in natural resource management in this part 2 lecture we will continue with the discussion on vulnerability assessment now why actually we need to assess vulnerability first of all that we need to know in case of natural resource management we need to know that who are the people are vulnerable which resources are vulnerable say for take an example of water we need to also analyze that if the water resources are vulnerable in a particular area means that the availability of water is actually under question maybe there is some stresses over exploitation of water resources now why do we assess actually vulnerability we carry out vulnerability assessment to identify the most vulnerable regions or sectors or communities so here i gave an example of water that's a sector so the people who are residing at that particular region they are the communities so you have communities then you have the resources and then also the location so these three factor you have to actually remember while you go for assessing vulnerability we also assess vulnerability to raise awareness among the people regarding the vulnerability of the communities themselves and also the system system means the water resource systems or the surrounding you know even entire ecosystem of a particular area how much they are already under stress if there is any kind of environmental stress etc etc so that also we can understand from vulnerability analysis vulnerability assessment also help us to identify the drivers you remember in previous lecture we discussed about two major driver natural and anthropogenic so it helps us to identify the drivers or the reasons for vulnerability okay this exercise vulnerability assessment also help us to assist in developing and implementing adaptation practices and strategies because if you can identify that that particular community in this particular location for this particular sectors say water land agriculture fishery they are vulnerable then it becomes much more easy for the administrators or the various stakeholders who are responsible for actually taking care of that community in that particular area so they will then bring in various adaptive capacities adaptation practices and that will slowly enhance their coping capacity under any kind of changes now next is why to assess vulnerability to climate change per se well we need to assess vulnerability to climate change to generate awareness and also the demand for resilience building anticipatory measures very very important where you actually promote and help in implementing the various resilience building anticipatory measure because anticipatory measures means you anticipate that there could be kind of a problem because of a climate change probably you anticipate that in a particular area there may be no rainfall in you know during kharif season june july so accordingly we will then make you know your irrigation ready so that means the planning the planning for building the resilience means regis you know it's in increasing the capacity of the people to withstand any kind of you know changes that happen due to climate climate change i mentioned that uh, whenever we are pushed out of our comfort zone whenever we are pushed out of our comfort zone we feel stressful and then there are some people who can still continuing doing their work in appropriate manner means they have adapted to this change but there will be some people who may not be able to you know carry on their daily schedule or proper work if they are pushed out of their comfort zone 
that means their adaptive capacity is low probably they are not you know trained aware or inborn capacity to adjust with the change is much less so they will suffer assessment vulnerability to climate change also help us to identify the most vulnerable system community people in a, any area where there is a projection of potential climate change now we know that this projection of climate change you know you can study through various model global circular model gcms rcms right we discuss that and from this climate model the output goes into the water model or crop model and then you come up with an estimation evaluation of change in cropping crop production or yield due to certain changes in the climate this also help us to assist in developing climate change adaptation practices and programs this also assist in developing programs to enhance long term resilience to climate change now let me give you an example suppose you are in an area where you know flood is a recurrent phenomena so you live near to a river so that means the house that you reside that has to be taken care of in appropriate manner means you should be looking for disaster resilience infrastructure in brief we call it dri so that means your building or your house should be made in such a way that in condition of flood also it will not get affected now when you know that that area you reside is a recurrent flood prone area so you need to look for resilient road resilient home infrastructure this we call as dri disaster resilient infrastructure a very upcoming field so this is clear that vulnerability assessment is important for a various set of regions and this is true for even vulnerability assessment under climate change now if you look at different stakeholders because see whenever there is a you know event flood or drought or anything so in that particular moment who are the people you you know it comes to your mind definitely there will be public works department pwd health sanitation agriculture right so you know these are the uh, department water resources they will definitely you know get into picture immediately if there is suppose uh, a flood situation so who are the stakeholders and what are their functions in vulnerability assessment very very important to understand okay now take us most of your case researchers now how researchers as a stakeholder can help in vulnerability assessment the purpose of researchers in this assessment is to understand the system vulnerability knowledge of the system vulnerability they can help in vulnerability maps creation by different software different tools local communities and institutions local community they can take part in adaptive capacity enhancement and also vulnerability reduction next non government organization ngos they also play, can play a role in vulnerability risk reduction training awareness next multilateral agencies like say unep undp gtz you name it there are various you know organization even unicef these are all uh, multilateral organizations which are working for various kind of projects across the world now what they can play they can help prioritization of resource allocation natural resource to the regions for resilience building means they will help to find out the resource allocation in appropriate manner so that the community or people individuals become resilient to any change next national level or state level decision makers finally they have to play major role in implementing any kind of 
you know, policy changes or technological changes in the system. So, they help in prioritization of state, district and agriculture system, forest, villages for adaptation, planning and policy initiatives. So, if all works and if there is some issue here, then the entire effort you know might not get into translated into some meaningful action on the ground. And that is why this you know stakeholder is very very important. Okay? Now, let us see another important aspect of vulnerability assessment and that is to do with indicator. For any kind of assessment, you need sound indicators. Okay? Now, indicators, we have biophysical indicators, socio-economic indicator and integrated indicator. What are their applications and who are the applicants? Okay? This is a very interesting table. So, please concentrate on this particular table for few minutes. Now, biological indicators example natural resources which is our topic, how actually these indicators play a role. It helps in impact the study of natural resource degradation on vulnerability. Indicator also helps in you know, identification of various biological factors contributing towards that vulnerability. Suppose, I give an, an example, a particular biomedicinal plant is a natural resource and could actually generate livelihood, could also provide some important medicine and compound. Now, suppose there is a you know climate change in particular area, temperature goes very high and that particular plant survives in low temperature. So, then you can understand that that how that high temperature will affect the plant you know overall biological activity. So, those factors like say chlorophyll opening, closing, different uh, hormone like gibberellin, cetylene, all these you know hormone content in the plant, the biochemical uh, processes within the plant system. So, these can, can actually get change and plants may become vulnerable. Biophysical indicator also help in prioritizing natural resources which are to be considered for your adaptation planning. Now, let us see who are the applicants for biophysical indicators. Watershed managers, forest department, agriculture department and various other you know lateral agencies, individuals, organizations, whoever is working with biological you know, components of ecosystem. Socio-economic another important indicator, it helps identifying the contribution of social and economic factors to vulnerability. This also helps to find out the target adaptation intervention on social and institutional factor. This actually clearly tells you that where is the issue with social and economic aspect. Because at the end of a day, if there is any kind of changes in the system, the livelihood of the people get affected. And if that is affected, then the entire social system fabric might get disturbed and socio-economic indicator basically helps you to understand that. Now, who are the people actually work on this aspect, local community, NGOs, government and the various non-government organization. Finally, we come to another indicator, which is integrated indicator and these indicators help in prioritizing socio-economic and biophysical, these two, you know, factors causing vulnerability. They help in designing technological, institutional, social and economic intervention to reduce vulnerability and adaptation strategies in production system. Now, who are the applicants? Watershed managers, agriculture, forest, fisheries, people from water resource department, animal husbandry and then of course, the multilateral funding agencies. So, indicators, applications and the people who actually work for this particular indicator based analysis of vulnerability assessment. Hazard specific indicator, different hazards can take place, flood hazard, drought hazard. So, what actually it helps these indicators enables in identifying the drivers which mainly contribute towards vulnerability. It helps in identifying the most vulnerable exposure 
units to climatic hazards say for flood, drought. It also helps in focusing on the high damage causing events and the regions for vulnerability as well as risk reduction programs. Who are the people or individuals, applicants, disaster management expert, development planning department, various organizations who are you know associated with uh, drought, flood, landslide, earthquake. It could be you know many people whoever is working in this particular field. Now look at the another aspect quantity of indicator means how many indicators that you may need. It is very critical for a very smart study to carry out the vulnerability assessment. Now if you go for a very less number of indicators definitely it will be easy for collection the data information and also the time consumption will be less we can finish the work very quickly but there is a disadvantage and that is many drivers probably will miss and may not be able to cover if you go for very less indicator. In case of this your indicators might be very general and drivers may not be easily recognized. The other option is that if you choose suppose many indicators too many indicators then it can provide you in depth and huge database huge amount of information but that will be time consuming it will be also very costly affair and it will definitely be very difficult to collect so much of data. So the best thing would be that you go for in between these two extreme medium level data and that you can decide on the basis of the particular location and the particular issue in hand. Okay. Categories of indicator for vulnerability assessment is another important part. So, you could have physical, chemical, biological, economical, social, institutional type of indicators. The examples for physical indicators are slope, elevation, soil physical properties, hydraulic properties, etc. In chemical, soil, water, air quality because these all you analyze through chemical analysis, right? Biological crop types, forest types, various kind of invasive species which compete with your crop, the crop you want to take, weeds. Economical indicator, land holding capacity, occupation, diversified income sources from various you know livelihood options, social indicator, gender, caste, marginality, inaccessibility, various issues, institutionals, presence of community based organizations, village level organizations like VDC, village development councils, banks, insurance, watershed management program, awareness program. So, anything which has to do with people and the society community. So, these are your indicators for vulnerability assessment. Now quickly example for biological indicator we already talked about crop type yield. So, here you try to find out you know various uh, crop type and their corresponding yield whether under certain conditions uh, in climate change whether they are giving more yield or less yield because both condition can takes place. So, that you can also study physical indicator groundwater level suppose is very very critical for your agriculture groundwater level. So, how groundwater level as a physical indicator can help it can be measured very easily and then you can actually use it for various kind of modeling exercise to predict that under this kind of situation or pending climate change how groundwater level will actually whether go down or come up. So, these are a various aspect that you can actually think about you know or various indicators for vulnerability assessment. One more important thing that uh, we need to keep in, in mind especially from the point of view of applications that it is the, the in role of these uh, various stakeholders to carry out a very focused vulnerability assessment and if your assessment vulnerability assessment is robust means if you can really identify the vulnerable system, vulnerable section of people then the adaptive measures or resilience building of the society will also be very robust. So, a large amount of responsibility resides on stakeholder 
the stakeholder who actually you know involved with the vulnerability assessment and you and me and our community is also an important stakeholder the researchers we need to play a very very important role as it is mentioned here for not only technical analysis but also uh, knowledge building awareness disseminations so we need to play a very very important role and we can do that when we ourselves develop our own skill and development of of skill can only takes place through appropriate training training and knowledge building exercises so participants so today in this particular lecture we have understood the various facets of vulnerability assessment its importance and who are the different stakeholders and what role they play then the amount of data whether we should go for less data or very high data or in between then finally we discussed about the various indicators that help us in vulnerability assessment and their role also into this assessment exercise Thank mm-hmm. you.